Impact and influence. Many want it, yet so few have it. Among the few who do, International Court Justice Dalvir Bendari stands out from all the rest. It is due to Bendari's strides towards reform in his nation of India and the safeguarding of individuals' intrinsic rights against oppression and inequality that has granted his seat on the bench. If Bandari chose to be an ordinary judge, whose obligation is to simply uphold the law and perhaps make one or two monumental changes, rather than be an international change agent, he would be still in the same spot he began in. It is his passion and tenacity not only for upholding the law, but upholding mankind's rights and values that has allowed him to gain global notice, impact, and influence. By being born to an illustrious family comprised of members of the Rajasthan High Court Bar Association, it seemed as though Bandari's calling was genetic. Dalvir Bandari has dedicated his entire life to the legal system, studying it, analyzing it, all in hopes of changing the tide. The possibilities for change became limitless after being appointed as a judge for the Indian Supreme Court in 1995. With his newfound judicial position, Bandari was able to make major strides for his nation, reshaping and molding it to consider each individual. Bandari was able to change social conventions within his nation and create humanitarian reform, all before being elected into the ICJ. Amongst his numerous achievements, what caused me to hold Bandari in such a great esteem in particular was his advocacy to eliminate inequality which still plagues India's educational system. From the creation of the caste system to modern day society, instead of receiving the proper education they deserve, these members of low status are being disregarded and exploited. Bandari's dissenting opinion on the Supreme Court of India's 2008 verdict is one of the most recognizable events in regards to his advocacy for equal rights in education. The judicial verdict upheld the validity of the Central Education Institutions Act, also known as the Reservation and Admission Act of 2006. The act provided higher educational institutions a 27% quota reservation for other backwards classes. The term other backwards classes is used to identify castes which are socially and educationally disadvantaged. In regards to their final decision, the Supreme Court also upheld the constitutionality of the 93rd Amendment, which would allow local governments to enact legislation similar to the Central Institution Educations Act. In his dissenting opinion, Bandari stated that quotas in private institutions should be illegal and that they violate the very structure of India's constitution. Unlike the majority of the Supreme Court, Bandari believes that every individual should be given the same opportunity to a proper and efficient education, regardless of status. His constant advocacy for educational rights since the 2006 case proves to me that this man not only upholds the rights of the individual, but through his practice, paves the way for the bright minds of the future.